What's up, everyone? Welcome back. Um, it's been a couple days since I posted the first uh, couple episodes. Well, first three episodes. Um, and wow, uh, it's been it's been received way better than I expected. Um, you know, I, I expected maybe a few people to watch it, um, but I mean. The first video almost has a thousand views at this point, which I, I don't really understand because I didn't really advertise it that much, but somehow it's finding its way. I don't know if it uh, got sucked into the algorithm and maybe it's getting spit out um, on people's feeds who maybe look up other programming stuff, but I'm blown away. I'm happy. Um, it's inspiring me to keep going. Um, so thank you. Uh, it's actually inspired me to consider, after I'm done with this uh, boss programming thing, I think I'm going to do another uh, set of videos where um, maybe I uh, code a game, you know, an NES game from scratch all the way through. Um, a, a simple game, obviously, um, but to where I take the time to explain, you know, everything that I'm doing and why I'm doing it, uh, and maybe kind of teach some people how to program for the NES, because, you know, when I started doing this, I didn't really give it a lot of thought ahead of time of you know, how I wanted to construct the videos. I just, you know, kind of wanted to program it and, you know, if, if people wanted to follow along, cool, but it, I thought it would just be like a cool sort of project to, you know, record myself coding a boss from beginning to end. Um, so I don't really take a lot of time to explain things in this, but in my next series of videos when I'm done with this, I think I will. So uh, if that's something that you think you might be into, um, stay tuned and subscribe. Uh, it'll alert you uh, that I'm doing it. Um, but in the meantime, we'll keep doing this uh, and keep the good vibes going because uh, it means a lot to me and I'm definitely getting a kick out of um, uh, all the comments and just the fact that so many people are watching. It means a lot. So today, uh, what I think I'm going to do is um, maybe try to get some of the collision going on the hands uh, to where Onyx can jump up on top of the hands. Uh, so I think I'm going to sort of generically make the hands move up and down just so we kind of have a moving platform. Uh, it's not going to sort of um, have anything to do with how the hands are going to function in the game itself. But uh, by having the hands sort of just move up and down, I can tell pretty easily, you know, if the collision is working, you know, Onyx can jump up on the hand. If the hand is lowering, hopefully Onyx will lower on top of the hand and... Um, Hopefully it'll work. We'll see. Um, I have kind of an idea of how I want to do it, but you never really know if uh, the thought you have in your brain is really going to pan out. So let's uh, let's get started and see what happens here. Um, so we'll go to uh, boss. Oh man, what is the name of that routine? Run boss. Run bosses. Nope, that's the one for the prologue. Run level boss. There we go. Okay. We'll go down to the level 5 boss. And we'll just generically... Where are you? There you are. So, phase 0, which is it? it is, because it, I'm manually toggling it to go to phase 1 to do the fireball thing. But we won't need to worry about that in this video. We'll just get the hands moving. So... Here we'll just do animate Abaddon hands. And we will go to bank 23, which is where we're kind of throwing all this code since we have space there. And we'll put our animate Abaddon hands routine. And what did I call the sprites for that? Hands. Well, doesn't get much easier than that. So, what, where are we at? There we are. What address do we have the hands at currently? And I'll, I guess I can explain a little bit as I go along. Like I said, I don't want this to be a programming tutorial, but maybe giving you guys a little bit more insight on what it is that I'm looking at would benefit. Um, so this 600 memory address, you know, 0600 to 06FF, which is 256 bytes, 
This is the memory where the sprites live. And a sprite consists of four bytes. Um, so there are four sprites per row here of address memory. And um, the first byte is the Y coordinate of the sprite. The second byte is the tile number of the sprite. The third byte is the palette number um, of the sprite. And then this fourth uh, value is the X coordinate of the sprite. So the first byte is up and down location. Last byte is left and right location. Uh, so these sprites right here, which we added, uh, I think, last video, uh, these are where the hands live. So every four of these bytes is a single sprite, you know, constructing these hands. So we started at 0650, um, and it goes through 0697. Um, so we will do, okay, so currently the Y coordinate of the top of the hand is at 58. So we're going to go, we probably need a value, like a, a variable to sort of, hmm, how do we want to do this? We need a variable kind of showing the current hand direction. So if it's one, maybe it's going down. And when it gets to the floor, we reset it to zero, and it goes up until it reaches 58, and then it sets to one, and then it goes down again. So let's just try that. Do we have, well, let me reopen that file that I accidentally closed. Onyx, it was page four. So I'm using three different pages worth of variables here, just because there are so many freaking variables in this game. I'm not great at planning ahead and sort of using variables for multiple things. Um, so a lot of these variables are kind of single time usage, but um, I'm scared to, when you start reusing variables for different things, in my experience, things randomly break that you don't account for. So I'm just gonna make another, you know, couple variables here in page four. Um, and page four, I call it this, this is the 0400 to zero uh, for FF. So all of this basically just another area in RAM that we can store stuff. So hands position, and we're gonna reserve two bytes for this because one for each hand essentially, because the hands are gonna move independently and they're gonna, since they're offset right here in the game, they're obviously going to reach the floor at different times, um, so the values are going to change. You know, one might be raising while the other one's lowering, so we need two variables. Probably common sense, but I'm going to try to explain stuff as I go now. So hands position. Load hands position x. And the, F, the x offset, you can set the x value to whatever and then like if it's say if x is one this will look at hands position plus one um, so it'll know to look at this ram address plus one to get to the second hands position uh, so hands position if it's one go to move hands up move hands up and then, so this, if obviously if one makes it branch to move hands up, this is where move hands down. All right, so move hands down, we're gonna load hands Y. We're gonna use both the X and Y registers in this routine. So load hands. If it reaches the ground, which we decided was A8, I think. A8. If it reaches A8, if it's not, if it's less than A8, 
not, we can just go to end, because that means it hasn't reached the floor yet. And we'll do an end. So if it has reached A8, we're going to set hands position X to 1. Right? Yes. Because 1 will go to up. So it's 0 here. When it reaches the bottom, we'll set it to 1. But we have to account for both hands. So we're going to increment x. And if x is 2, that means we've done both hands. But if it's not 2, we'll go back to loop. Right? Right. Move hands up. One hands reach the upper location, which is 58. If it's greater than 58, we don't care. It's still raising. Go to end. If it reaches 58, we set hands position to 0. We increment x. If it's 2, we're done. If not, we go back to loop. All right. So I guess we hands. Oh, we can't go back to loop though cuz we're we need to increment y to get to the second hand. So the second hand will always have y as one sprite, two sprites, three sprites, four sprites, five sprites, six sprites, seven sprites, eight sprites, nine sprites. Is this the start of the second hand? Tile BB. Tile BB. BB. so stupid. It's sprites, Kevin. Sprites. I'm just going to make the same mistake over and over. BB. Alright, it is. Alright, so that is sprite 0674. That's address 0674, which is 24 bytes more than where it started at. So we need to add 24 to the Y offset. So, transfer to Y to A, add 24, 24. All right, and then we'll do it on this one as well. So that way, when it loops back to the beginning of loop, Y will be looking at the second hand. So X will be offset to 1. Y will be offset to 24. That should be correct. So that's just setting the variable to 1 or 0. Now we actually have to look at the variable and move the hands depending on which way the variable is. So we're going to move Abaddon hands. We'll reset X and Y again. load hands position x and hmm. compared to 1 1 is up move hands up and having the period in front of the sort of identifier um, naming convention means that it's a local label so you can reuse the same label you know within this routine um, like I have move hands up here I have move hands up I will in a second here I can do that as long as the periods in front of it 
this one, move Abaddon hands without a period in front of it, I can only use that label once in my entire document or it throws a fit. So just a quick note on that. Move hands up. All right, so load hands V for the vertical offset, Y. I'll just subtract one from that value. And we have to do it for nine tiles. So we'll increment X, we'll add four to Y because we have to do it for every single tile, which is every four bytes. And then when we've done it nine times, that means we've done every tile for a single hand. All right. And then when it's done, we load x to no dang it so x will be 9 here can we just subtract 8 to get it to hands position x, which x being 1. Let's just see what happens. Transfer x to a, subtract 8. And if it's not 1 here, that means it'll be the second time through the loop, right? Because if it's already one, and it moves hands up. Oh, but that won't work, because that's looking for nine. Hmm. How can we do this? I guess we can compare y, compare y to, what would y be at the end of all this? 4, 8, c, 10, wait, 4, 8, c, 10, 20, 30, 40, 44? If it's not 44, go to loop. So that's subtracting 8 to get that back to 1. Let's just see if that works. Alright, so this is move hands down so we'll add one increment X that's right we actually need a label here not just a comment move hands down Subtract, compare, no idea if that's going to work, but we'll try it. And that goes back to loop. All right. Animate Abaddon hands. We will put move Abaddon hands there also. We'll compile. No errors. And 
and um, John pointed something out to me, uh, and I'm a moron once again. Once, at least once a video, I'll be a moron. Uh, it has Onyx as the one saying this. Why would Onyx be talking to himself? I love that I spent so long, like working on this text routine and not even stopping to think. Hey, idiot. Abaddon needs to be here. Anyway, I digress. We'll fix that in a bit. Come to me, Patty. Mayonnaise. And... Nothing. Alright. Oh. It's because... Place Abaddon hands. It's placing them. It's replacing them at the same location every frame after trying to move it, so it never really moves. So, how can we do this? Let's take that out. Let's just increment boss phase, just to get this moving here. So this stuff underneath is not going to do anything now. It's just this return from subroutine is just stopping it. So none of the floor fire stuff is ever going to work. We're just doing this temporarily to get the hands moving. So now it'll place them. It'll increment the boss phase. And because this looks at boss phase, if it's not zero, it goes to this routine. And we should animate and move some hands. So it's definitely moving them. Almost. <laughs> There's a tile here that's not getting moved. But it's not changing. Hands position. So it's moving hands down. Hands Y. Compare to eight. Reaching eight, it should be setting hand position to one. Let's maybe just do a single hand. It annoys me that I can't do multiple things at the same time. There's something simple that I'm missing. I see. I'm not looking at the vertical position. Looking at the X position instead of the Y position. It will never reach A8 because it's not moving left to right. Oh yeah! <laughs> Why is the second one not working? It's going way lower and way higher. <laughs> Why would that be? All right, so X is not two, it goes back to loop. Hands position would be one. Hands V plus Y. Plus 24. Is my math right? Plus 10, plus 20, 
plus 4. Yeah, that's definitely the right address. It's weird that the first one would work, but the second one wouldn't. So it's looking for us to reach A8. There is no part There's no part of this hand that's hitting A8. Is it changing when the other one changes? Yes. The second this one hits the ground, it's changing this one. Okay. Hands V gets to A. Oh, we can't just end. We have to go to shuffle to next. Basically, it was looking for that first one, and if that first one wasn't either at the top or the bottom of its route, it just went to the end. I have to tell it to go to the next, to check the second one if the first one's not doing it. Let's see if it works now. Oh, yeah. Obviously, the coordinates aren't quite right, but... So why would this guy not be moving? Because we subtract 8, and this is looking for y. So it falls short by 1. Oh boy. So I can't do that. Man, do I burn another RAM? Let me just find a random. I just said I don't do this, and now I'm going to do it. I'm going to find a random variable that I'm not using. Bat event. There's no bats on this screen, so bat event should be available, right? That won't conflict with anything else. That event. So we'll increment. When do we want to move that event? Let's just increment that event. Load that event. If it's nine. That event. Load that event compared to nine. So that maybe should work. Let's find out. Oh my god. We are breaking. Yes, we're breaking big time. That event.
we'll reset that event here. So it's good for the second go round. Make that event. Hands up. Maybe. Wowzers. <laughs> Let's take a moment to appreciate how messed up this is. So it's moving too many sprites. Clearly. But was it moving before? It shouldn't be even moving anything until it clears past the dialogue. So let's take out all this nonsense. Bat event. More like cluster event. All right, let's start there. We're back to where we were. Let's see. So that works, but it's still working Okay, so it is still doing it even during the dialogue. So... That's a bummer. Hands position. Moving hands up. Increment X. Yeah, this thing right here. So when it goes back to loop, It needs to be one the second time. So what if we do it this way? We'll still use bad event, even though something might be using bad event that caused it to blow up a second ago. can't do that. Got to set it to zero. Load bat event. Oh, we don't need to compare bat event, right? I'm so freaking confused. Why is this stumping me? X has to be 1 the second go round.
That way it's not using X at all here. Just looking at bad about. You can just do increment X. And it'll go back to loop with hands position in the one. Take that out. But we're going to increment that event. Load that event. Compare to nine. Let's not move up. We're just incrementing x. And we're storing that event to zero. All right. Does this blow it up? Yes, it does. What the heck could I be doing wrong? Let's try another variable for the hell of it. Well, let's follow this through. Y is zero, so we're adding one to make the hands go down, incrementing bad event. We're adding four to Y. We're comparing bad event to nine. If it's not, go back to this. So it should only be moving the hands down nine frames, incrementing X afterward, resetting bad event. If Y is 44, which is not, all right, maybe do this. So, so clearly it's moving way too many. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, so four, eight, nine. Four, eight, nine. So Y would be 10, 20, 30, 40, eight? Is that what's wrong? Should it be 48? shit. All right. So that just goes to show you a uh, simple math error will make things go crazy. All right. So we want to stop this when it hits the ground. So we need to raise this maybe four tiles, eight tiles. Or it's pixels, not tiles. Hands. Let's just try a zero. There we go. That'll do. Oh, yeah. All right, so right now, okay. Step one done. We got hands a-moving. And like I said, this isn't indicative of how they're going to move in the game because they're going to slam the ground. So there's going to need to be some, like, velocity and, you know, it's going to be a little bit more intense than patty cake, what's going on right now. Um, but I just wanted to get them to move so I could maybe program some collision um, with me standing on the hand 
So when I jump on this, you know, he'll ride up and down with the hand. Um, all right. Step one done. That took way longer than it should have. 40, 41 minutes. <laughs> should I push through? I don't know how... I don't know how long or short these videos should be. Like, how long can you guys comfortably watch one of these videos? I'm doing it for me, so I guess I need to just do my thing. And if people like it, cool. And if they don't, bummer. Um, so let's just push through, try to get collision working. Um, I got about 52 minutes until my hockey game starts. I should be able to have it done by then, right? Right? All right. Run level boss. All right, so we're here at moving and animating his hands. Let's just throw the collision in the same routine for the hell of it. We're gonna restructure all this at some point. Um, but right now, this is kind of the bucket that all the current routines for this video are going in. Um, so, onyx to hands collision. Bank 23. Onyx to hands collision. All right. So what we need to do is check the Y positioning. How should I do this? The Y positioning of the top of Onyx. Add however many, let's see, how many tiles is it? So that's 8 pixels, 16 pixels, which is 10. So we need to add 20, essentially, to the top of Onyx's hat, which will put us down at his feet. And if that is less than the top coordinate of the hand, we ignore. All right, load sprite bank V, because that's, that's what I call Onyx, sprite bank. That's what I just what I call the main sprite in every game I do. Vertical, vertical position of sprite bank, we'll add 20. We'll compare hands V, which is the top of the hand Y position. If it's less than that, and we'll have to adjust this to work with both hands um, after I get a single hand working. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this one hand at a time just so I make sure I don't... I can simplify this as much as I can. All right, so now that we know, right now we're overlapping the hand. But we probably need to make sure we're not underneath the hand. So we'll do load hands V. And we'll add ten. Let's just see what we what happens if we add ten. Ten. So ten would put me completely underneath the hand. So we'll add ten. Compare to sprite bank V. If it's less, we'll go to end. All right. So right now, if it gets to here, it means we're in the hand. But we're so far only looking at Y position. So we need to make sure we compare X position now. So load sprite bank 10. So 8, 10. So we're looking past onyx. Compare to the left side of hands. If it's less than that, we'll go to end. 
and then load hands add 8, 10, 18, 20, 28. Compare to the left side of Onyx. If less than that, go to end. So if it gets to here, theoretically, we're on the hand. And my brain, my brain says yes. My brain is rarely right. All right, so we're on the hand. We need to tell the game to stand at that point. So we would be falling, and I have a variable that says onyx is falling. So maybe if we turn that off, if we're on the hand, maybe that will work? What is that variable called? Onyx falling. So let's say if we're there, Onyx falling is zero. It can't be that easy. Ready? You ready to jump on this hand? I'm nervous. All right, here we go. Jack shit. All right. So, is that the variable? Let's look up the falling routine. Onyx is fall. No. Check fall collision. Oh, we need to turn off the jump flag, too. So what happens if we're standing? Compare to background four. Check for jump stop. So there's a jump flag that we need to reset and onyx falling that we have to reset. So is it just the jump flag that we didn't do? Jump flag. Let's see. Well, It's not. Maybe I should push it up. Push Onyx up a pixel. Because we can't just stop him from falling. It has to move. All right. So we'll do load hands v. We're going to subtract. All right, how many sprites is Onyx? That was 20. We established 20, right? And we're going to store sprite bank v. Gonna reset X here. got to be a more eloquent way to do this. And I should have like prefaced all these videos by saying, A, 
assume the way I'm doing things is always the wrong and most inefficient way because I'm not a trained programmer. I learned this by online tutorials back in 07 or 08. Um, and this is literally the only programming language I knew for a long time. Um, so I think a lot of a lot of ways that programmers think to do things, my brain just doesn't think that way. So I apologize if you're looking at this saying, why the hell are you doing it this way? Um, this is just how I do things. All right, so those two are on the same y-axis. We essentially don't need x for this if we're just going to hard code. So we'll add 10, no, we'll add 8, sprite bank v plus 8, sprite bank v plus 12. That's those two. And then we're adding 8, sprite bank v plus 16, plus 16. That is just a single sprite off, which is weird. We'll skip that. Those two are plus eight. Sprite bank V plus 28. And then the next two are back where the last one was. Bank V plus 32, 36, and that's it. So in theory, again, probably not going to work. It's going to look at the top of the hand. It's going to subtract 20, and it's going to move us. <laughs> if it detects us, 20 pixels above the hand. I mean, ish. It's not great. It's like gravity. Oh, what the fuck are the hands doing? That is something. I think it's trying to, let's slow it down. So it's trying to do the falling sprite. It's just constantly resetting it. All right, what happens if, and we're just ignoring the hands right now. We'll worry about that in a second. If we move the hands down faster. They're going up at the same speed, but down faster. How will my gravity play with that? Maybe we can program around my ineptitude. No, it's still doing the same thing. There we go. That kind of doesn't look bad. I mean, even the hands are correct. So why is the ripe skin 
not playing nicely. Yeah, it's like not positioning. I'll need to look at that. But I mean, that's not awful. As long as he's looking left. <laughs> hmm. All right, so if I want to expand this routine to look at the other hands. So we'll set x and y to 0. This we'll call the beginning begin. Hands y. Hands y. And we'll do cycle instead of end. So we can go to the next set of Abanon hand tiles. So hands, 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 hands. And we put a cycle. Transfer Y to A. We're adding 24 to get to the second hand. We've got to clear the carry. Add 24. Transfer A to Y. Compare Y to 48, which means it's the second time through. If it's not 48, go back to begin. If it is 48, we're done. Right? Right? We didn't even use X, so we didn't even need to worry about X. Let's see what happens. Does the second hand work? Ha ha! Still some weirdness with the hand when I'm facing right. But that's cool. It works. Ish. We had to sort of hide our shortcomings when it comes to programming. But I mean, theoretically, that's close to the speed he'll be going when he's slamming, right? So that's, I mean, it's never going to be slower than that. So I don't know. I think that works. And you can shoot his little eye. It's not letting us jump from his hand. That's probably something I'm going to have to figure out. But I think this is a good stopping point. Um, you know, one of these videos we'll just focus on like cleaning up all of this stuff um, to make it actually function. But I mean, he's standing, he's moving, it's a start, and it's a good length of time for a video. So uh, we'll stop it here, and um, hopefully next time, um, I think next time I will fix him you know, I'll, I'll get him to hopefully be able to jump when he's standing on the hand. Because um, right now, I think the way we're doing it, it's just sort of pushing us up by math. But I, th I don't know. I need to figure out why it's not letting us jump. We'll figure that out. Um, maybe get the fireballs coming out of his mouth. Uh, at some point, we need to... Make the screen shake when the hand hits. I don't know 
exactly how we want to do that because what's going on on the side here? See that gibberish on the right? When does that get there? Immediately. FF. Wonder what that could be. I think it's sprite gibberish. Like extra sprites? Those are off screen, those are off screen. That's the HUD. That's the HUD. Wonder what that could be. Hmm. Oh, is our, I wonder if our scroll value, I wonder if it's scrolling a single pixel into this background. So you're like seeing a sliver. Yeah, it looks like it is because that's red and that ground doesn't fully make it. So our scroll value must be set to one right now. So we'll have to fix that in the future. Or maybe we'll just black out the other name table to, again, hide our imperfections. Because maybe the scroll has to be set to one for some stupid thing I did in the past. Um, so we have a lot of cleanup to do. Um, but we're getting there. Oh, that's way wrong. Oh, yeah. Let's fix that real quick. Uh, hands plus 28. Let's try 20. You guys thought we were done. One C. That's pretty good. Not perfect, but it's close. And we'll obviously need to not have it collide, you know, when it just slams on us. So we'll fix that next time, too. But it's a start. It's a good start. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Like and describe.